this might be the easiest and fastest project you have ever made. Welcome to my scrap tote bag tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this super easy, beginner friendly, cute and functional tote bag that is great for carrying any of your essentials wherever you wanna take them. Make it for yourself, make it as a gift. You're gonna be really surprised at how easy it is to make this and how easy it is to make any alterations or adjustments to it as well. Crochet by numbers. All right, so how much time did it take me to make this particular tote bag? It took me approximately three hours and 10 minutes to make this bag. Cost of this project, it should be free. This is a scrap project or a use what you got in your stash type project. So ideally it's free. Handles though, if you really liked these leather handles, these ran about $10. Or if you just crochet your own handles, again, zero free. So this whole tote bag could possibly be zero dollars to finish the entire project. For materials. Okay, scrap bag, hopefully you are using just whatever you have in your stash. What's great is you can use any size yarn. Try to keep it consistent though. Keep all your size fives together, your size fours together, size threes together, just so that way you're not dealing with other issues with your bag assembly. It'll help a lot. The amount of yarn that it took to make this project will also vary. It's going to range, just kind of utilize whatever you have in your stash and allow this to be a fun scrap project. The materials that I used on this project was Vanna's Choice Taupe Yarn. It's a size four weight yarn. The uh, Premier Puzzle Cotton Yarn I have over here, I will put links to in the description section below, the colors and everything so you have exactly or you know exactly what I used. The crochet hook that I used was an I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You definitely wanna have a measuring tape on hand. That is a big must because we wanna make sure that everything is in line. Then of course the embroidery scissors, the yarn needle, the handles, depending on if you wanna get actual leather handles, bamboo handles, plastic handles, or crochet your own handles. That's all you really need for this particular tote bag. All right, now that we have all of our materials, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin by chaining 17 chains. One, two, three, 15, 16, 17. Great, for row one, we will make a half double crochet stitch in the second chain from our crochet hook. Looking at those Vs, one, two, half double crochet and then continue making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way across. Go ahead and continue row one and I'll meet you at the end to show you what to do next. And 16, great. To move on to row two, we just chain one, we turn our work, and then we make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. Now when it comes to these panels, that is what we are doing for every single row, is just chaining one and making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. Now depending on the yarn you're using, you're going to need to make a different number of rows. And this is very important. What, we're, what we are going to want to do right now is pull out our tape measure. I made each one of my panels 22 inches long or approximately 56 centimeters long. I am saying go by length because I had an experience making this scrap bag. I made 45 rows with the Premier Puzzle Cotton yarn, and with the Vanna's Choice yarn, I had to make 51 rows. That is a six row difference. That's pretty big. So definitely go by your measurement and not by the number of rows in this project because just like for me, even though they both claim to be a size four weight yarn, I had to make a completely different number of rows in order to satisfy the length. All right, go ahead and continue on working however many rows that you need to work in order to hit 22 inches or 56 centimeters. Finishing up row 51 here, which doesn't really matter the number of rows, just that I hit dimension. Checking my measurement and Boom, check that out, right at 22 inches. Flip that over, right at 56 centimeters. I'm good to stop. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a single crochet border around the entire panel. That way it's easy for easier for us to join all the panels together. If you know how to do this, go ahead and skip forward into the video to the joining section. Otherwise, follow along with me as I show you how to make the single crochet border. Chain one, turn our work. 
Make one single crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way across the top. One, two, three, 15 and 16. Now in this last stitch space or corner stitch space, we are going to make three single crochet stitches so we can get around that corner and start working along this side of the work. So starting with this one, one, two, shift, and three. Working the sides of our panel, we are just making one single crochet stitch in the side of every row. It is very helpful if you know how many rows you made. That way you can stay on count. So I made a total of 51 rows in this panel right here. The third single crochet stitch of my corner actually counts as my very first single crochet stitch of this side. So I start with one, and then two, and ah, three. A little helpful guide, especially with this half double crochet stitch, is you'll start to see these two pronounced lines here. These two pronounced lines occur after two rows of your half double crochet stitches. So for me, as a helpful tip, I just need to make sure I have two single crochet stitches in the side of the row between these two points. I am going to actually specifically put my crochet hook so I see these two lines. I'm gonna place it in the middle and then right in line with that, that line right there. So two, see the two lines in the middle? One, that line right there, two. And 51. Okay, pausing here at this next corner. We just finished working the side of our work. If you are somebody who's looking at your project right now and noticing it is bunching up or it's looking, it's just not laying flat, go back and make your stitches loose. Redo what you just did with much looser stitches, all right? We do not count the foundation row as a row. What I'm going to end up doing is placing three single crochet stitches in that last or 51st stitch space. So there's one, two, three. We are now working along the bottom of this panel. I'm actually going to work around the foundation row and into row one to make my stitches. So finding each stitch space, counting across. Two, three, four, Last stitch space, making three single crochet stitches. And then we're going to continue working the other side of our panel the exact same way we worked the first side. So just keep going without stopping. And last stitch here, already have a single crochet stitch in there. So I'm just gonna make two single crochet stitches to finish off this single crochet border. Slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch that I made and slip stitch to close this border. Cutting a long tail so I can weave in my ends. Perfect, that's it, that's all we gotta do. Make four, so here's one. Making three more, whatever colors you wanna make, making sure they're all the same dimension. That's the most important part. Once you're done making all four of your panels, weave in these ends first, makes things a whole lot easier, then come back and we will be joining all of these panels together. Once all four of your panels are created, we are going to start joining them. I have here kind of two of the brown taupe color, two of this beautiful turquoise brown color. This was the premier puzzle cotton yarn that I thought was just stunning. Before we even get started, let me show you how we're gonna lay it out so that we join. It's gonna look like a pinwheel or like one of those wind blowers that you used to blow during the summertime and it would spin. So have one in this direction, take the side of your next panel and bump it right against the side or the bottom to the side here, just like that. Next panel, be on the side of that one. And the following panel will come to the side of this one. Here is what it'll look like when we are joining them together. To make things far less complicated. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and remove two of these panels. 
bring these over and focus on just these two using my crochet hook and whatever color yarn that you wanna to use to join your panels together, go with that. I'm just gonna continue using this taupe brown color to finish everything off so it all goes together well. Now the join is really up to you, whatever join you wanna do. The one that I'm going to do that I really like and think is very pretty with this particular project is the slip stitch back loop only on the front side of the work. So we're gonna to come to the three single crochet stitches here in the corner. I'm gonna insert my crochet hook into the back loop only of the second or middle single crochet stitch that I see here. So I got one, two, here's the second one, back loop only, insert my crochet hook. And come to this panel, find this corner, the back loop only of the second single crochet stitch or middle single crochet stitch here. Yarn over, pull, pull, and even pull through that loop on your crochet hook that we started with. And continue working, next stitch space, back loop only, back loop only, then yarn over, pull through all loops. This part is the easy part, working along the one-to-one -one stitch ratio. I think this part we can all understand and get. I want you to continue working and I'll meet up with you here at this corner because I think this is where people are gonna start having questions. I just got to the corner three single crochet stitches. We will continue doing that one-to-one -one stitch ratio join that we're doing. So next stitch space, back loop only. First single crochet stitch, back loop only. Next stitch space, back loop only. Second single crochet of the corner, back loop only. Next stitch space, back loop only. Third single crochet of the corner, back loop only. Now what you will notice is that the work is gonna want to start to move and join in this way. Yes, we want that. We are gonna start joining up the side of the tote bag, creating that full join from the bottom up the side. What you will also notice is that they're not going to be even. And that's perfectly fine. We, this happened because of this section right here. It's also going to be how we create those peaks at the top of the tote bag that we will attach the handles to. Go ahead and keep going. I'll meet up with you when we finish this join up the side of the panel to show you what mine looks like, give you a little peace of mind on what yours looks like, and then we will continue on. Looking at the three corner stitches here, I'm gonna keep going until I reach that second single crochet stitch. And then I'm going to pause. Great. Now this looks like a giant differ difference, a huge gap it may make you feel a little uncomfortable, but no, this is actually okay. Now I do want to mention that my two panels had a different number of stitches in them. This panel right here had a total of 45 rows. This panel here had a total of 51 rows. So taking that into consideration, if I wanted to go back and maybe spread out some of my stitches more to avoid some of this bunching happening, I could absolutely do that or just move forward and everything is fine. It's all going to even out in the end. When you are ready, tie off your work and join the next panel. So grabbing next panel, I'm gonna choose the next color. New panel, I'm going to join in this direction, right here at this corner, and repeat exactly what we just did with this other two joins. Nothing different, keep going. As I was joining along, making sure that all of my side panels were not too scrunched up and everything was looking uniform, I did notice that there was a consistency here with about six inches of gap before the join stopped. So now that I knew that, it was a lot easier for me to use my stitch marker. So if this is six inches right there. I'm gonna grab the top of this panel that I'm joining. 
it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one stitch ratio for this per the or these two panels but this way I can keep everything consistent closing the last two panels together almost done finishing the very last join to close up the bag we actually do not tie off here I'm gonna keep going right here so this is the second single crochet stitch of that corner that I join to the bag and then I'm going to keep going making a slip stitch in the back loop only I'm going to work very loose stitches and I'm going to go right into making a border around the top of the bag so it's seamless and it just keeps on going looking at the top of the bag I'm going to make one slip stitch in each stitch space all the way around the entire bag when it comes to the tips of the tops of these triangle shapes here, I still make just one slip stitch in each stitch space, making my way around. I do not do any increased stitches or any multiple stitches in the same stitch space. Not for this project. Working our way all the way down to this corner stitch this would be the second single crochet stitch of that corner border I'm going to insert my crochet hook into that stitch space yarn over pull up move this join yarn on the inside we will use that to clean up all of the ends and weave that end in find this space here where it attached to this long panel I'm going to insert my crochet hook into that space yarn over pull through so now I have three loops on my crochet hook and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on my crochet hook after that I continue on with my slip stitch border now that you know what I do from the border of the top of my bag feel free to make your way all the way around and I'll meet you at the end to show you how we tie everything off and what we do next once you make your way all the way around the top of the bag border, we're going to stop by making the last stitch, which is going to be just inserting our crochet hook into that stitch space, that corner, and then inserting our crochet hook into the back loop only of the next adjoining stitch. That closes up any gap and it makes it look really clean and really nice. Grabbing our scissors, tying off our work. This next step, all we're doing really is cleaning up all of those ends, making sure everything is woven. Our bag is technically complete. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take all of the tails that I created here at the base of the bag. There should be four. I'm going to grab two of them, two and two and I'm going to tie a knot to really close up that hole at the bottom. And what I can do with those remaining tails is just weave those in with my yarn needle tapestry needle. Once you're all done weaving in all of your ends, the next step that we get to play with is the handle for our bag. One of my favorite ways to play with tote bags or any other kind of crochet project is to add an element to the crochet or to the yarn that is non-yarn related. I think it really levels up the bag or levels up the project in general and makes it extra special. Here I have a couple of examples. I have this beautiful leather tote bag handle that I got off Amazon. I also have these bamboo handles that could work up great. And you can also just crochet your own handle, whether it's a simple just bar that you can attach to your bag, or I found this beautiful handle example that is a spiral design, which is a nice thicker handle that when you place it on, it has a beautiful, stretchy, comfortable feel to it. I hope you've enjoyed following along with me and that I've given you the confidence to give this project a try and maybe even change up the colors or change up the crochet stitch that you use within each panel itself and really make this bag your own. Thank you so much for watching my video, following along with me. I hope you have the best day, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet to my channel so you don't miss more upcoming content and I will see you at the next one. Bye.